myself only Allah do I worship and asking for help every day five times must I always pray I am proud to be a Muslim now everyone say la ilaha Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh mercy be upon you and everyone in this room and inshallah everyone can experience a happy life I'd like to welcome you guys back to another episode this episode is a little heavy there's a lot in it so instead of going into full details what we're going to do today is we're going to identify the important aspects of counseling okay but what's unique about it is that we're calling it Sunnah Infused Counseling. And we've spoken a little bit about this before, but today is about actually taking somebody that you're helping from where they are to where they want to be. It's important to be very motivated to help because helping is not easy. We're trying to and turning it into action. It's not as simple. For example, if I was to ask you, that person that came to you for help, and you didn't know what to do, how does that make you feel? If that person was to see you again, would they ask you for help? Probably not. Couldn't help them to begin with. So you've missed out on an opportunity. Now how do you feel? How do you feel knowing that Allah helps those who help others and you didn't help others? Or that Allah will relieve a difficulty from you or a grief from you on the day of judgment if you relieve it from somebody else. And somebody came to you with a difficulty or a grief and relieve it for them. Now how do you feel? Brothers and sisters, we're missing out. There is so much reward in helping others and we're missing out. So today is about rejuvenating our motivation, but also knowing what steps. See, a lot of times when we talk about helping others, we have very prescribed answers. Sometimes people want to give you only one way of doing it. So if somebody comes to you with a specific problem, they give you a specific answer. And we ignore context. We ignore everybody has circumstances. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam treated people according to their context, according to their circumstance. He knew people. He was able to develop such a strong relationship with people. People loved him. There was Sahaba who thought he was their best friend. But we all know Abu Bakr has that spot. So if you want to do something called sunnah infused counseling, then you better be practicing the sunnah in your mu'amalat, in your dealings with people. In your, you're not going to have all of them, but you're going to have some of them that are going to contribute to an effective helping session. All right? And we've spoken about the counselor characteristics earlier. So, Sunnah infused counseling, it is essential that your characteristics are in line with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What about the actual intervention? Sometimes we only have one way of doing something. Do this, right? There are so many areas where we can help people. Why don't we talk about that for a second here? How would you think you would start helping somebody? Think of somebody who came to you for help one day. What do you think after attending some of our sessions? What would you do with that person? Helping them to think better. So helping them to think better, right? Because thoughts impact emotions and behaviors. Absolutely, definitely. What about yourself? Uh, giving money. Giving money? Giving money is a form of help. Instrumental support. Mm -hmm. 
what you would do is you would network them to the proper organization that helps people with financial difficulties. However, poverty has a way of destroying not only a person's pocket and wealth, but also their motivation and also their skills. So sometimes when we look at people from the poverty model, it's not just wealth, it's also poverty and skills. However, when you give somebody something, you give somebody wealth, you give somebody money, I want you to think about the impact it's having on their life. Think of what difficulty are you relieving from this person? Because a lot of times, you know, back home in, in Canada, we have many refugees that arrive. And a lot of times people think that, oh, they're refugees, they need money. They always need money. Give them money and that's it. And sometimes that's what rich people do. They throw money at a problem and they think it'll... Some people just need... Reasons. Developing a strength-based attitude is more than simply looking at the world as nice. Everything's nice. Because you know what? It's not. It's about identifying strengths in people. It's about focusing on the opportunities in the person's life rather than the problems and the difficulties. Right? Remember, you're a basic supporter. You're providing that basic help. You're not expected to deal with people's clinical depression or their schizophrenia. You, you want to refer them to somebody else. But what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to be part of the journey of that individual, taking them from where they are to where they want to be. And it's essential that you're motivated. If you're ready to be a helper, join us after the break, and inshallah, we'll go through the other steps so that the next time somebody comes to you for help, you can be in the position to provide sunnah infused counseling. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You ready for some sunnah infused counseling? All right. Now remember, sunnah infused counseling is a framework in development. It's being developed, right? The knowledge is all there in the sunnah and the authentic sources. We just have to translate it into action. And what we've done here is we've just identified the framework. And it's actually the framework of almost any form of counseling, right? You have your counselor characteristics. You have your paradigms, the way you see the world. You have the relationship. That's extremely important to have a strong relationship with the other person. Then you get into the actual skills. Assessment. Intervention. The action. Evaluation. And then there's certain processes that go on throughout counseling, right? Like reflecting, going back and forth. It's not so rigid. Okay? So any framework you look into, usually, most cases, there's some sort of assessment. From that assessment, you start to identify the problem. Right? You start to identify the problem. Back to the verse in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, chtanibu kathiran min al Keep away most cases of suspicion. Right? All of those negative attitudes, all of those false biases, cognitive errors, faulty schematas, right? All that stuff in our minds that are not accurate, that are an assumption, put it aside. When we're identifying a problem, we want solid facts. And the facts are going to come from where? From the client. From the individual you're helping. Not from you. You're going to ask them how they think. Them how they feel. You're going to observe their behavior in their context. Not yours. Remember, your job as a helper is, as we're doing here, is to scaffold. You provide some support temporarily so that they can be on their 
helpers, counselors, psychologists, we're trying to work ourselves out of business, right? If we do a good job, we're unemployed. <laughs> Make sense? But unfortunately, people will always need help. So, inshallah ta'ala, Allah makes us better helpers. When you're starting to identify a problem, usually, if the individual came to you for help, it means they're aware they need to change, correct? So you don't have to do too much on motivating them that they need to change, because they already know that. Sometimes you keep talking, you're pushing them away even more, right? Have you ever had some, ever go to somebody and ask them for advice? And they kept talking and talking and talking, and then you felt worse than when you first met them, right? Ever have identify the proper problem? They thought the problem was something else, so they went off on a tangent. Or they just started giving you more information that you already know. So you got to be unique, you got to be creative. And so, if somebody wants to change, you start to collect data and you start to do something called tafakkur. Thinking, deep contemplation. You don't just say, oh, you've got this problem and I'm keeping these vague for a reason. Because if I give you a hypothetical case, yes, I know it'll make it easier, but then we'll lose the short time that we have here and we'll only focus on one problem. So I'm expecting you to add, you know, insert the problem here, right? So we need to think deeply about this specific problem, whatever it is, and the context of the individual. What's leading to this? What patterns are occurring here? And think about it. Once you come to time is fleeting, time is passing. According to Ibn Qayyim, he says, you have a sensitivity to the passage of time. You start realizing that there is no more time to waste. You have to solve the problem because it's making you miss out on so many opportunities. It's blocking you from happiness. It is increasing your stress. It's destroying family relationships. All of this is impacting your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, as we start to work with the individual, engage in something called shura. Right? Shura. See, these are Islamic concepts. It's easier for us to say, you know what, yeah, that makes sense. I know what shura is. You don't need to tell me what consultation in Islam is. I know the principles of it. I know how to do it. So that's excellent. Start using that with the person you're helping. Start to explore what is relevant here. Ask the individual what is relevant here. Once you've developed a good solid understanding of what the actual problem is. You want to confirm and go back and forth because if you start on the wrong problem, what do you think is going to happen? For example, you know what a slope is, right? So if the slope, no matter how angled the slope is, once you start after several hours or years or the passage of time, you're going to see you're way off your mark. It's easy to hit the goal when you can see it. But when the goal is far away, that one degree change can change everything. That's why it's so important to get set. Once you identify the problem and you move into the intervention, then it's time to have tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've fulfilled the means. You just need to start continuing and trust the process. Because the process is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I'm just going to give a few basic things in any counseling session as well. Okay? So, first, you've identified the problem. Make sense? Then, you start to establish the intervention plan. The goals. Here's one way you can do it. Because if I was to ask somebody, 
What are your goals? What do you want to do? A lot of times people say, oh, I don't know. I just feel very bad. So there's something that I've tailored from a specific type of therapy. For Muslims, we call it the dua question. The dua question, supplication question. Ask somebody, if you made dua tonight, you raised your hands with true sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you called on Allah. The next morning when you wake up, imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your dua. How would you know it was accepted? How would you know your dua was accepted? Now you start to identify what the problems in this person is a little more detailed. You start to identify the goals of counseling. He might say, well, you know what? So and so would respect me better. I would get better grades. I would feel happier. I would, you know, you'd, you'd, some people would say, I'd open up my computer and my bank account says a million dollars. Or if you're a billionaire, maybe that's a problem. <laughs> See what I mean? So you start to identify a little clearer. People start to think more, develop the goals. Now you know what you can work towards. So if somebody said, for example, I want to feel happier, what does that mean? You can explore that a little deeper. And agree. Once you decide, there has to be azam, commitment. You've got to stick to the regimen. You've got to stick to the plan. Just like if a doctor gives you antibiotics, you've got to finish them. Even if you're healed, finish them. Go to the end. There's something else going on here. And of course, tawakkul, trust. If you take a decision, then put your trust in Allah. For God loves those who put their trust in Him. See, Once again, these are very vague concepts. But try it out. Try this out and evaluate. Ask yourself, is this working? Is my life getting better? Is what I'm doing actually contributing to my goals in life? Because if they're not, that goes back to the way we think. Oh, I've always been doing it. So therefore, I must continue to do it. But one last thing that I want to leave you with is that if you are helping somebody, you have to make sure to keep their problem confidential. That's extremely important. Don't share their problem with others. They don't want you to share it. Don't share it. Let me end with a quick story. Musa alayhi salam. You know Musa alayhi salam. There was drought, no rain. And Musa alayhi salam and all of Bani Israel are raising their hands and making dua, making dua, making dua. No rain. And Musa alayhi salam asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why no rain? And Allah says, there is a sinner amongst you. There's a sinner amongst you. Let him leave, rain will come. So they wait, they wait, they wait, they wait. All of a sudden rain comes. The sinner made tawbah. The sinner in his heart changed. He started the path of change. Ya Allah, I will never do it again. He was ready for change. And so Musa salam says, Oh Allah, nobody left. Yet you sent down the rain. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It is because of the repentance of that individual. No rain because of his sin, but rain because of his repentance. And Musa says, Who's this man? Show him to me, Ya Allah. Imagine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh Musa, I have hid, I've concealed his sins for 40 years while he was a sinner. Do you think now that he's repented, I will expose him? Keep it confidential. Keep it sunnah. And inshallah, Allah gives us the energy and the strength and the knowledge to 
engage and learn and develop sunnah infused counseling. I only love for my brother what I love for myself Only Allah do I worship and ask him for help Every day five times must I always pray I am proud to be a Muslim now Everyone say La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah La ilaha illallah